Hey everybody, it's Ron from Pick Dogs, and this is Ron's Rundown. We're going to go over the MLB games for Monday, April 11th, 2022. Now, if you like what you see, make sure to give us a big thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. And also, leave us a comment down below with what your picks are for the games in baseball for Monday. Alrighty, let's get into it. Here are the games for April 11th. Our first matchup, we're going to go to Kansas City as the Guardians take on the Royals. Now, the projected starting pitching matchup for this one has Aaron Savale going against Carlos Hernandez. Savale was a solid option at the back end of Cleveland's rotation last year. 12-5 record, 3.84 ERA. Doesn't really get too many strikeouts. He limits walks. He doesn't really blow anybody away. 1.1 whip last season. Pitched well in spring training. He's just a solid option to have as your 4 or 5 starter. Now, on the other side, Carlos Hernandez, he really struggled in spring training. I think it's noteworthy to mention 14.73 ERA and only 7 one third innings, 12 earned runs allowed, 5 home runs allowed. So I worry about him. You know, that was in spring. Now he's facing a lineup top to bottom of MLB players. I know the Guardians have struggled offensively so far this season, and they might be, you know, they might struggle the rest of the year as well. But this is the type of game where your lineup can get going and make a statement. I like Cleveland on the money line in this one. Next up, we have the Pittsburgh Pirates taking on the St. Louis Cardinals. And I have to say, it feels like these two teams have played each other 63 times in a row to start the season. Uh, But this will be the final game of their four-game set. Zach Thompson and Dakota Hudson, the projected starters for this one. I thought it was a nice pickup from the Pirates to grab Zach Thompson in the offseason. You know, he uh, he pitched well for the Marlins last year. 75 innings pitched, 3.24 ERA. Uh, He really limited the long ball, only .7 home runs per nine. And spring training, he also pitched very, very well. 13 innings, 12 strikeouts, a 2.77 ERA. So, you know, not a bad guy to have at that four spot in the rotation. Dakota Hudson on the other side didn't pitch much last year, only eight and two-thirds innings as he was injured for most of the season. He pitched well in 2020 with a 2.77 ERA, but he also had a 4.5 FIP that year and a 4.93 FIP the year before. And he also struggled in spring training at this year, so... You know, I know the Cardinals' defense is one of the best in the league. Guys like Arenado, their entire outfield is pretty much gold glovers behind the dish with Yadi Molina. But you don't want your defense doing too much for you as a starting pitcher. He doesn't get a lot of strikeouts. Uh, you know, I, I do worry about him this season, Dakota Hudson. And I think if this, if there was a game this series that the Pirates would compete in, this would be the one. So I like Pittsburgh on the run line getting the one and a half. I think there's plenty of value there. But if you want to go for it all and take the money line. I I wouldn't knock you. I think I'll sprinkle a little bit on the money line with Pittsburgh here as well. Next up, we have the Milwaukee Brewers going to Baltimore to take on the Orioles in this interleague matchup. The projected matchup for the starting pitchers, Adrian Hauser and Bruce Zimmerman. Now, the Brewers are the road favorites here for good reason. I think they're the better team, and I I like them on the money line here. You know, the Orioles and other teams that are going to be near the bottom of the standings this year, they're still going to win. 50, 55, maybe 60 games this season. So there's going to be 60 different times to make money on them on the money line. But I just don't think this is the spot. It's it's really tough for me to take him here. Adrian Hauser, he pitched well in spring training, pitched very well for the Brewers last year, 10 and 6, 3.22 ERA. Brewers, I don't think, are very happy with their performance at Wrigley Field. I think, uh, you know, this is the type of get right situation where you can take advantage of a weak team like Baltimore. Bruce Zimmerman, just wasn't very good last year. 5.04 ERA, 5.38 FIP. Um, doesn't get a ton of strikeouts. He walks a lot of batters. Gives up a good amount of home runs as well. Spring training, eight innings he pitched, three home runs allowed, 7.88 ERA. I just can't get there with the Orioles as much as I maybe want to with that nice plus money. Just can't in this spot. Give me the Brewers on the money line. Our next game, we go to Texas as the Rangers host the Rockies. Now, I understand why this money line price is set where it is, uh, but I do think there is some value with the Rangers as the home team. We know the Rockies do not play nearly as well on the road as they do at Coors Field, and there's a number of reasons for that. And we actually have seen the Rangers put up a good fight against the Blue Jays in their first series of the season. We know they blew that big lead in the first game of the year, 7 nothing. It was gone in a flash. Uh, but I don't think the Rockies have the offense to do that, especially when they're not at Coors Field. Taylor Hearn, the projected starter for the Rangers, pitched well in spring training. He was decent last year. We, we saw some strong signs from him last season with the Rangers. And I think he can do enough to get a win here for Texas. So I'll take him on the money line. 
Our next game, we go to Comerica Park for the Red Sox and Tigers. Now, Michael Waka is the projected starter for the Red Sox, and I have to say, he is one of the starters that I do tend to fade, at least in recent seasons. Waka did not pitch very well with the Tampa Bay Rays last season, and that's really tough to do as a starting pitcher. We know the Rays are just like a pitching heaven in the AL East. They seem to just get really anybody that goes through that team manages to resurge their career and have a strong pitching season, but just Waka 5.05 ERA, and he struggled in spring training with the Red Sox, pitched in 15 innings, gave up 11 earned, four home runs, so I do worry about him this season. I don't think he's going to be a viable option in that rotation, and I think that the Tigers are going to be able to get to him early and often in this one. Matt Manning, I think, is a solid option for Detroit at the back end of the rotation. I know this Red Sox lineup can hit. I think it should be a fun series overall, but give me Detroit as the home team on the money line here. For our next game, we're going to go to St. Petersburg, Florida, as the A's take on the Rays at Tropicana Field. Paul Blackburn and Luis Patino, the projected starters for this one. And the Rays look pretty sharp to start the season. Uh, you know, a team that every single year people doubt because the roster may not look too good on paper. But man, they prove a lot of people wrong and they're doing so yet again. Now they take on an Oakland A's team that did struggle a bit in Philadelphia. Paul Blackburn last year, 5.87 ERA and at spring training, a 9.35 ERA. Gave up nine earned and only eight and two thirds innings, 13 hits. He's had a lot of walk issues in his career. He walked 5.2 guys per nine in spring, 2.3 in last season in the majors in the regular season. I think the Rays get to him here. And Luis Patino, the type of guy, you know, sure he didn't have the best numbers last season for the Rays, but he's still one of their top pitching prospects. And we know with the Rays and prospects, it usually turns out good. I think he's going to have a much better year in 2022 than he did last season. Give me the Rays here on the run line. I think they win this game comfortably. For our next game, we're going to go to the NL East. This should be a good one as the Mets take on the Phillies. Now, the Mets beat up on the Washington Nationals in the first series of the season, winning the series. The Phillies did a good number on the Oakland A's. Now they face each other, two teams that would like to make a run in the NL East this season. Taiwan Walker, the projected starter for the Mets. He had a very good first half of the season with the Mets in 2021, but he did struggle quite a bit in the second half of the season. He didn't look very sharp in spring training of this year. Seven innings, six earned runs allowed, 10 hits, and two home runs. Now on the other side, Ranger Suarez, he had a fantastic year last year. He pitched in 106 innings at a 1.36 ERA. He was an opener quite often for the Phillies. They would go throw him out there for about one, two innings, and then they would take care of the rest with the bullpen. I would expect that yet again in this game. I think Suarez can keep the Mets bats down early. And I like the Phillies to win this one. It's going to be on Fox Sports 1. Should be a great game and a great series. Next up, we have a pretty exciting series brewing as the Blue Jays take on the Yankees at Yankee Stadium. Now, both teams have had success in their first series of the season. And this should be a great matchup between, I think, the top two teams in the division. Now, I worry about the Yankees in this spot with Jamison Tallien on the mound. You know, he was 0-2 last season with a 6.23 ERA versus these Blue Jays in 2021. And I think the Blue Jays lineup is going to be able to get to him yet again in this one, especially at Yankee Stadium at Hitters Park. Alec Manoa pitched very well for the Blue Jays. He was one of the surprises of the team last year. 9-2, 3.22 ERA with a 1.05 whip. That can get it done against this Yankee lineup. So I think the Blue Jays have all the value on them in this one. So I'm going to take Toronto on the money line. For our next game, we're going to go to Atlanta as the Braves host the Nationals. It's going to be short with this one. i got to take the Braves on the run line here. You know, the Nationals just haven't looked good on either side of the ball in the first series of the season. And it looks like the projected starter is Anibal Sanchez for Washington. You know, he's had a very good career. He's been, he's been playing for quite some time now. But in recent years, he just has not been a viable option. I don't know how much longer he can be a starting pitcher in any rotation. Maybe he can work out of the pen. But, you know, in spring training, he was not very good at all. He struggled last season with the Nats. And I think the Braves get to him hard in this one early and often. Give me the Braves in a blowout. I like them on the run line here. We're going to wrap up another four-game series here as the Mariners take on the Twins in Minnesota. The projected starting matchup, Chris Flexen taking on Dylan Bundy. Now, Dylan Bundy struggled very badly last year for the Angels, 6.06 ERA. But we have to remember, he's only two years removed from a top 10 finish in AL Cy Young voting with the Angels. 
in 2020. I don't think he's too far away from that Dylan Bundy. He pitched very well in spring training, three outings. He had nine innings, 10 strikeouts. So I think he's going to have a much better season this year, especially if he's the four or five guy. He's not expected too much in the rotation for a Twins team that could use him, you know, a solid arm at the back end of the rotation. I think Bundy's going to be able to provide that. Now, Chris Flex on the other side, he was very good in the first half of the season last year, not so much in the second half, and he did struggle badly in spring training this year. He pitched in 16 innings, so he got a lot of work in, but he also gave up seven home runs, 13 earned runs, so he had a 7.31 ERA, seven home runs in spring training. It seems un- impossible to me, but uh, I think the Twins' bats get to him in this one. I think they're going to see plenty of long balls here in Minnesota, and I like the Twins on the first five innings line as I think that they take the lead early. Next up, we have another interleague series as the Marlins take on the Angels. I like the under in this game. I've taken quite a few unders in Marlins games this year. I like it here again. Eliezer Hernandez getting a start for the Fish. Six innings of shutout baseball in spring training with six strikeouts. So strong, strong spring for Hernandez. And I've liked what I've seen from him in his young career thus far with the Marlins. On the other side, Michael Lorenzen trying to bounce back this year with his new club now. His second team, he was on the Reds for the first seven years of his career. He struggled last year, but we know it's very tough to pitch in Great American Ballpark, one of the bigger hitting ballparks. Really next to Coors Field could be the number two hitting park in baseball. It's a new look, new team. I think he's going to pitch pretty well in Los Angeles this season. And I think, you know, with the Marlins bats not really getting off to a great start, I think runs are hard to come by here. So I'm going to take the under in the Marlins-Angels game. We end with probably my least favorite betting game of the night, unfortunately. I just don't see a ton of value in this Padres and Giants game here. I I do lean towards the over, but I would rush to the window for that one at all. I just don't trust the Padres bullpen right now. I also don't trust the projected starter, Nick Martinez, who is projected to get started. He had a 5.66 ERA last year, 5.8 FIP as well. I think the Giants are going to get to him, but they do play at Oracle Park, not the biggest hitter's park. So that's why I'm not loving this over here. On the other side, the Giants, I think the Padres are going to be able to put up a fight offensively in this one. This should be a great series in terms of entertainment value and competitive value, but in terms of uh, value and and betting, just not there for me. So give me the over as a very, very slight lean. And that's it. Those are the games for Monday, April 11th. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to hit that thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. And remember to put your comment down below with what your picks are for the games in baseball on Monday. As always, this is Ron Romanelli. Good luck.